we got some good sound here, right, from, from uh, Tony Ferguson. Can you set this up? Yeah, let's get to that sound. So, okay, Tony Ferguson is fighting Khabib Nurmagomedov for the lightweight, interim lightweight title, which, by the way, do you feel like this is as much hype as it's gotten and as hot as it is and, and as hot as Khabib was in November when he he fought in New York? Do you feel like this is it's kind of flying under the radar yeah, a little it should bit? Yeah, it should be a main event and it should be hotter. I think some of the comments I've heard from Tony in the buildup is true. Like, it, it, it's... There, if you fo- focus and push these guys out there and gave them that real main event push, I don't see how people would not be like, wow, these guys really hate each other. I mean, let, let, let's watch the crap out of this. Like, where am yeah. I going to be that night? Like, let's do this, right? No, I mean, uh, this is right up there with TJ Dillashaw and Cody Garbrandt as far as the best fights on paper this year that I'm excited to see. Um, and the, unfortunately, I think the way in which you promote this is you, you talk about Conor McGregor. You know, you say that the, Conor McGregor is the lightweight champion. These guys are fighting for the interim championship. The winner will get uh, Conor McGregor, but I, I think the UFC, the UFC can't even sell that, you know, because because no one really truly believes it. I mean, we, maybe maybe the winner of this fights Conor, but maybe not. You know, Conor completely calls his own shots, and with Conor tied in the headlines to Floyd Mayweather, you just can't you can't give this fight that rub that it it needs and that that would be so good for it. And that you know, here is the guy we're going to find the, the Conor McGregor's next opponent because that's how you sell this fight to the casual fan base, and, and maybe it just ha- that, that, hasn't happened. Maybe that tells you they know what they plan on doing with Connor. Maybe it's not 155. Maybe this is a little key, little key, little little spoiler alert, Brett. All oh right. boy. Am I smelling a conspiracy theory? You're always smelling a conspiracy theory, <laughs> all right? All right, so back to the back to the audio here. So I did talk to Tony Ferguson um uh, on Tuesday of this week and uh you know he was making the rounds you might have seen him on Fox Sports uh got on the phone with him for a few minutes we talked about uh his tra- his, his training uh, um methods are unorthodox you might say and and actually to set this audio up you're going to the first thing you're going to hear us talk about is that there's a video on Instagram and I would encourage anybody who hasn't seen it to go go take a look at it and it's just Tony you know no gloves on shirtless sweaty you can tell it's at the end of a workout and he's just standing there flexed letting his 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 muay thai coach just continually kick him in the ribs both sides left side first ah 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 then right side ah just over and over again he's kicking his ribs and so i was asking tony like what what in the world is up with that so listen to this audio uh when did you when did you first hook up with Bono? because i saw him you know kicking you in, in the ribs on your instagram but i had uh, i hadn't really seen him before then like how how long have you guys been working with one another I've been doing that kind of training for a very long time. Uh, I take the hard body approach from the Shaolin, and it's uh, something I, I really, really focus in on and hone in on because I can take a kick and I can take a punch, and everybody's like, man, how does this guy do it? And I'm like, you know what, this is how I do it. I use it a little bit how I do it. I was like, you know what, take a couple shots to the traps, man, and see how you feel afterwards. Your adrenaline is pumping. you got the goosebumps going through your mind. Your skin is just on fire, and you just want more of it. Because I'm sick like that, man. I, I'm out there and I'm an athlete, and it's something that not everybody can do. So I take great pride in that, and being able to get kicked in the ribs by my coach. It's cool. I'll do, I'll do it all day. But it's something I've been doing for a very long time, and, I've, and I, I, I didn't learn it. It wasn't that somebody taught me how to do it. It's something that I had in my mind. I needed it to get done because this is tough. This is mental toughness. I mean, like I said, I've been doing it for a long time. A lot of people in football like to dish the hits, but they don't like getting hit. I was a cornerback. I never ran away from anything. So I always liked getting hit because why it brought the best out of me. It always brought the best out of me because I never had to worry about anything else besides making the play. And when I get hit, it's no different than really, honestly, just doing what I have to do. I mean, when I get hit, I can see the punches or the kicks coming through, and I focus in, I can hone in. It's almost like seeing a fastball when you're batting. You can see every single seam as it rolls in. And you mack and you hit that contact, and you don't have to worry about anything else because it all just makes sense. How much of it is like uh, like pain training? I mean, are you like putting yourself in pain to just be familiar with it, or is it totally separate <laughs> from pain? No, it's completely different. It's a whole different mindset. It's body conditioning. So I mean, as intense as it looks, it's body conditioning. If you don't condition your body, your mind's gonna be weak. And once you take a hit and you buckle, that's that's not a champion. My championship mentality comes from you know from Grand Valley State, and not even just that, but before then, it's dealing with the hard times like in Michigan when it was cold, freezing, and, and being able to go outside and run. And nobody's there holding my hands. And I lived in a part between two counties, and nobody wanted to pay for a stoplight. So I was always running in the dark, and I loved it, man. You know, I was running early in the morning or, or leading my team to victory by doing all the extra stuff, like doing sprints afterwards or do, hitting my 12 by 12 with my weight, which is like a weight set that I learned from Grand Valley. And, and what it does is it just it forces me to bring the best out of myself. So 
if if I'm not if I'm beating myself up, yeah, it's cool, but you got to recover. This is a full time gig that I do. It's my career, so not only am I beating myself up, but I'm resting. I'm getting mentally focused. I'm asking myself, okay, so why did you do it? I'm like, I don't have to ask myself. I've been doing this for a long time. I'm a veteran in the sport, and uh, what I'm doing is right because I keep winning, and I have a nine-fight win streak on my way to 10. This guy's going to have his hands full. He's got to be able to do all the work. And his conditioning's pretty I've seen it. A lot of power shots. And I get hit hard. So when mm-hmm. I see him throw his hardest shot in the beginning of the round, and I just eat it, and I just keep moving forward, and he tries to take me down, and I stuff it, I know his energy level is going to go low. And he's going to have his hands full, buddy. And he's going to see a dark coming. He's going to be put to sleep. Everybody looks past me. They just think, oh, he's a whatever. I don't have to go into detail with it. When somebody brings up a certain name, it's cool, man. I gave Connor a pass, and I'm going to keep him up to my word because he's having his baby. I understand that. I told him, go spend some of that money that you earn. Go do your own thing. Because you know what? When, the, when you want to really come back and do the man sport, instead of quit trying to make that money, because money made McGregor soft. I say McNuggets, you know, because he's made it that fake, that pink stuff from McDonald's that nobody wants. Mm-hmm. So as far as that's concerned, do I get pissed? Yeah, I get a little heated. But the real belt is between myself and Khabib. He's 24 now. Dude, I'm like, I forget how many wins I have. I don't even care anymore because they just <laughs> keep racking up, man. It's just like my checks, my performance bonuses. They just keep racking up. And I, I don't give two shit, man. I'm going to go out there and do what I have to do. And I'm going to perform to the best that I can because I prepared day in, day out, three sessions a day, sometimes four, barely crawling into bed, taking my ice bath, t- doing what I have to do to get my shit together and, and be able to do it again the next day. Mm-hmm. And then once I see Khabib, he sees that focus, he's going to be like, oh, coach, can you jump in here with me? And then Javi, I'm going to look at Javi, I'm going to dog his ass too. And everybody that's in his corner, that's the same thing I did with RDA. I dogged him out and I dogged his corners out. And they wanted nothing to do with me. As everybody talks about this fight leading up to it, I think a lot of like analysts, you know, and experts are going to say, Khabib's going to try and get this fight to the ground. And if he's able to get the fight to the ground, then he'll win. And if he's not, then Tony will win. <laughs> I mean, what's, what's wrong with that analysis of the fight? If he gets to the ground, he's going to have a whole handful because my rubber guard game has increased. My flexibility is there. And I, I work with Tim Plan and Jiu-Jitsu and Coach Eddie Bravo on a regular. And my, when we were in Big Bear, I was working with Tim like a couple of days out of the week, man. So my focus is not just on the ground. Like, I can beat this guy in all assets. But I want to punish him in the stomach. I want to hit him so hard he has to take a knee and look at his coach to come and rescue him. That's my purpose. I love my boxing game. And I would gladly go toe-to-toe with this dude. And he doesn't want any part of it. When mm-hmm. I stuffed his shot like I did to RDA or when Josh Thompson tried to take me down and I flip out of it or Granby out, he's going to be so stuck because I control chaos. And he doesn't know how to do that. He panics. I've seen him panic. He lost a T-ball fight and he cried afterward. Actually, he won the T-ball fight. But that dude cried because he knew he lost. I've seen his ass cry in Sambo, too. This dude's always had shit handed to him. And you know what? He's not going to get this handed to him. He's going to get my shit handed to him. That's what he's going to get. Yeah, wow. Yeah, right? Okay, Brett, to your point, that, that kind of sound right there should be front and center because forget about selling a fight. Forget about selling a personality. Remember when you were taught when you were young, first night in jail, you got to go after the toughest guy, right? You got to punch him in the face. <laughs> if I'm in jail and I'm looking across from that guy, I'm not. I, I'm giving up, Brett. I mean, uh, this is great stuff. When you saw the sick look in his eyes against Dos Anjos, when he's accepting those kicks to the leg, those inside kicks, and almost just smiling at them, you knew maybe he's a little wired a little bit differently, but oh, this, yeah. this sums it all up, bro. Tony, Tony's always been wired differently, and I think we've seen that uh, evolve, and we've just seen it so many times now because he's been in the UFC for so long. He's been in, in high profile fights that we are starting to get to know this guy and i i think it's very very real that he's at his best once he starts to get hit uh, the, the guy he does have like this weird reaction to getting hit and it's different than anybody else and it can break people i mean it can it can really frustrate people and and, and wear on them mentally i mean we saw that in the rda fight rda has a heck of a left hand especially at 155 pounds you know this brian and, and he caught he caught Tony with it a lot. I rewatched that fight the other day, and, and he was he he dropped that left hand on Tony's chin several times early in the fight. And, and Tony just continues to, to come forward like it never happened. And when you got a guy like that, I, I really do think that that is one of his best attributes is is just his ability to to walk through fire and to put pressure on guys. You know what? Two things that he mentioned that I wanted to ask you about are a. 
you know, how much do you believe in that? Do you believe in the training? Do you think that, that he uh, training in that way gives him some type of advantage in the fight? And then two, he said Connor's soft. He said that all the money that Connor has made has made him soft. Do you think there's any any little piece of, of truth to that? Well, you know, it's that old Marvin Hagler saying that, like, you know, uh, how difficult it is to get up and run when you're sleeping in silk sheets. And we know that uh, Connor's, you know, wearing silk underwear for all I'm concerned at this point. But, no, I don't think Connor's soft. I mean, I think that it just go, look, look, just go back to that five-round fight with Diaz where, where you learned that. But is there something to this training? I, th- I think if you're... If you're as crazy as Tony Ferguson, then yes, because it's so mental, this game, Brett, right? Like, it's so mental. Like, you can be as skilled as you want, but if you don't have that 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 piece, that extra, that extra, you know, category that you can't define, if this helps a guy like Tony Ferguson build up that pain tolerance and build up that Im- immovable force inside of him, then I think it is effective. But, no, I, 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 you know, am I a protector of the pretty boy still? I still don't think Connor's soft at all. No, I don't either. And, and as far as, as Tony's training goes, I think it works for him. I don't think it's going to work for a whole lot of people out there. But, uh, yeah, I think he's going to live and die by this. You know, I, I've seen he, what, one another thing about Tony is that he, he does put himself in terrible defensive positions sometimes because he's just so willing to put himself in the line of fire. And, and I think with Khabib, you know, that's going to he'll have his openings on the feet. But more so, you know, Tony is just a guy who, who will fall out of balance a little bit because he's so aggressive. And and that will open up to the takedowns. Five round fight, though, man. And, and that's what's so so great about this. And we've we've tried to see this fight a couple times it hasn't happened because of injuries the fact that it's a five round fight for an interim title i think that uh the stars align and this was meant to happen all those injuries because we're under perfect circumstances now to see this fight